I haven't done a YouTube video in forever. Um, hey girl, hey. Hey boy, hey. It's been a long time, but welcome back to my channel. <laughs> So, new setting, we're in my bathroom because, well, it's all going to come together. Um, in this video, I wanted to talk about something that I just personally feel needs to be talked about. It's a little bit of my background, and then also it's just how mental health really works as far as, like, getting the help you actually need. What I'm choosing to talk about if you, I'm gonna just say trigger warning, trigger warning, sound, the alarms, whatever. Let's get into this. Um, I'm kind of nervous to be honest because this isn't really anything that I think I've told anybody to be honest. Um, I'm gonna talk about the time that I actually tried to go forth with um, committing suicide or severe self-harm. Once upon a time, a year ago, uh, was it 2018 of March, I sat in this bathroom and I just cried. Like, I was relatively having an okay day to be honest like my day was actually pretty okay but something happened I'm not gonna say what happened but I saw something on social media which is why I like to say that social media is the devil it's it's awful it's an awful place awful 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 I mean it has its benefits obviously but it's awful I saw something on social media and it just really triggered me like I know I mentioned before, maybe I haven't, I'm somebody who bottles everything up until the very last second. And when I mean the very last second, I mean like the last of the last of the last second. So when I saw what I saw on social media, I literally came in my bathroom after having a relatively good day and I just literally sat on the floor and I started crying. Like I cried my eyes out, like I was on the floor just bawling, just crying, like, and it's that kind of cry where, like, you have to catch your breath, and, like, I don't know if this is just me, but, like, my chest starts hurting when I'm, like, serious crying, I have to catch my breath, can barely fucking breathe, like, I cried, I cried so hard, and then I just started thinking, like, all of these negative thoughts, like, any negative thing that I could have thought, I would have thought. I thought I was unworthy. I thought like nobody wanted me. I didn't need to be in this world. I didn't need to be here anymore. I didn't have any friends. I, I thought so many just negative things. I got up and I had the intentions of hurting myself. I started looking for something really sharp. I don't personally have the little singular razor things that you're supposed to like i don't know what people do with those i don't have the little singular razor things but i remember that i had a very extremely sharp pair of tweezers i mean these are tweezers that i never ever used because every time i used them i would literally always hurt myself like make myself bleed i went and found those tweezers and i honestly just started hurting myself like i i cut myself across the arm the first time and it wasn't enough. I did it again. I basically did it till my arm was bleeding, like blood was like flowing down. I did that four times. Um, after the fourth time, I just, I don't know what came over me, but I just, I stopped and I just sat and I thought to myself, what am I doing? I'm personally somebody who, in terms of suicide, I just always felt like when you do commit suicide, I personally feel like 
the only person you harm is the people around you. So I don't know if I stopped because of that reason, because when I tell you, like, I was fucking bleeding, like, blood was just running the fuck down my arm. It was a mess. And mind you, this is literally at like one in the morning. When I stopped, to be honest, I thought about texting a couple of my friends after I stopped and I thought about it. But anytime I'm having like a the the depression depression episode or I'm just I don't I don't know what to call it anymore. I just always think of how much of a burden I would be on my friends just by telling them this. So I one friend had actually texted me as I was like wondering like what to do and he asked me was I okay and I was just like to be honest no I, I told him what I was doing I did text somebody else I did I think I group texted two of my other friends but I wasn't completely honest with them when I told them what was going on and they sent me uh, I think it was like a suicide helpline. And at that time, in my mind, I was just like, I ain't fucking doing that shit. <sighs> I mean, it just so happened that my other male friend had texted me. I asked if I was okay. And then I was just like, no, I was a mess, still crying. Blood was still running down my arm. Like, he came over at one in the morning and he took me to Target. And we walked around Target for maybe like two hours until he felt that I was okay enough to go home and be in a better mindset. And the reason I'm telling you guys that story is because how it relates to how difficult it is to seek actual help when, in regards to mental health. The reason I have a therapist is because I try to attempt suicide. That is the sole reason. If, if I told you anything different, I'm sorry. That was a lie of omission that I just wasn't ready to tell anybody. But that is the reason. However, to get a therapist, and this is where the health system completely fails you. I went to the doctor and just, I didn't explain to them that I was hurting myself or having suicidal thoughts. I just said... It feels like a cloud is always hovering over me, like a really dark cloud. She recommended me to my therapist. At the therapist's office, they ask you a list of things, and you have to be honest when you're answering these. You have to answer, have you had suicidal thoughts? Have you tried to commit suicide? I lied and said no. The reason I lied is because the moment that you tell a healthcare professional that you have had suicidal thoughts or you have tried suicide, they place you in a hold in a hospital. And if the hospital nearest you doesn't have a psychiatric hold, they will transfer you to one that does. And within that hold, you cannot have your phone for 24 hours. You're literally locked in a room basically until they deem you non-suicidal. That is what the mental health care system does for people with mental health. They don't really care per se about what you got going on. All they hear is, oh, you want to hurt yourself? This is how we'll try and help you. Their help actually isn't help at all. So I had to lie to my therapist just so I can like, see her. And then when I finally got the therapist appointment, she had been asking me herself. She was just like, have you ever had suicidal thoughts if you ever tried to commit suicide I lied again that was basically like three times I lied one for my primary doctor one for the check-in at the therapist's office and one to my therapist's face therapists and other medical professionals legally are required to take you to, or um, admit you to the hospital for a suicidal hold slash watch in a psychiatric hospital their way of helping you isn't exactly helping you. The system honestly fails people with mental health. Even to like get a therapist, under insurance, mental health is registered under a specialty need. If your insurance does not have specialty need, you will not be covered for therapy. 
I mean, I've had free therapy before, but to be honest, that shit just don't work for me. I need a real therapist, and in order to get that, it has to be under a special TV. When I sit back and think about all of this, it's kind of sad that even people who are designated to help you with your issues, they don't actually help you. Going into a suicide watch in a psychiatric hospital is so scary. It's so lonely. Nobody is allowed to visit you. I've had friends who have been in the uh, suicide watch thing in a psychiatric hospital. It's not fun. It's not helpful. I think it makes you go a little bit more, like you lose more of yourself when you're in there because you expect to be helped and yet they're locking you up. That's essentially what they do. So the moment you say mental health, they lock you up. Judging by the friends that I had who did go into the suicide watch thingy, I knew that was something that I did not want it. I knew this well before I sought out any doctor. I forgot who told me and when they told me, but I knew this well before. I had no other choice but to lie. To this very day, my therapist still doesn't know that. My boyfriend is literally always telling me that he finds out new things about me every day. He thinks he doesn't, well, he knows me, but like he thinks I only share like a portion of me and there's like much to know. I guess he's right. I'm not saying, I don't want to come on this video saying that I'm a liar because that's not something I do. That was more something I did to protect myself because the system was going to fail me if I didn't lie and tell them otherwise. I needed to guarantee me a therapist. And to be honest, I'm really one of the lucky ones because not every black person has or has access to a therapist. It is extremely hard. I mean, I said before that therapy is under specialty need. Your insurance has to have specialty need even for it to be covered. If not, you're paying out of pocket and my therapist makes $138 per the hour. So if y'all can afford to pay therapists like that out of pocket, kudos to you. But this is definitely something that I wanted to talk about and bring light to this because it is a sensitive subject, but at the same time, more people need to be aware of how mental health and medical attention actually works, how they work hand in hand, and how inevitably they can do the opposite of help you. You really have to play your cards right when it comes to mental health, mental health per se. Like, if I, if someone wouldn't have told me that do not say anything with suicide, I probably would have went to my primary doctor and mentioned it, and I probably would have been in a suicide watch hold for 24 hours. I probably would have been scared out of my mind. I probably would have felt 100% worse than what I was already feeling. And at that time, it definitely wasn't something I was explaining to my parents. I mean, I still don't really tell them about it, but at that time, it definitely wasn't something. You know, with things like that, you always take the risk of end up looking crazy. Like, if somebody hears that you've been in a psychiatric hospital under suicide watch, in their mind, the crazy alarm goes off. And to be honest, I know firsthand, like, it might not even be, I'm out of breath, I'm sorry. <coughs> hella nervous making this video because I've never actually told anybody any of this <sighs> if I was on the other side and I didn't know anything about mental health and somebody told me like they've been in a psychiatric hole the ignorance to me probably would have just registered that person as crazy not knowing that you could be com a completely sane person it's just a sad fact of reality that the medical system just its not made for us. And when I mean us, I mean, I do mean black people in general, but I really mean like people with mental health, even with white people, like they literally automatically throw them in there. And now that I know what I know, maybe this person doesn't necessarily need to be in a suicide hold. Maybe they just need actual help real help like therapy psychiatrist 
that kind of help. Not the kind of help that turns out to be traumatizing for some. I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, if you guys have been watching so far, thank you for watching. Um, everybody who's ever supported me, I know I say this so much, but it really doesn't go unnoticed with me. Like, I, I notice everything. I just might not respond, but I notice everything. I see it all. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to share this story. I'm honestly surprised I didn't cry. Not really. I mean, how I only cry like once every five years. Bad bitch syndrome. That's a lie. I cried a lot last year. I mean, 2019, 2018, just, whoop. But, um, yeah. I'm really not sure if YouTube is my thing yet, so this may or may not be the last video to be determined. So maybe y'all should let me know. Maybe not. I appreciate it either way. All right, ta-ta for now. Toodles. Oh, I didn't even show y'all my nails. Gosh, damn it. I've been slipping on the nails. I don't even want to show these because they're short and let's be honest, I'm a bad bitch. I do long nails. I mean, I love my short nails, but mm, I'm gonna come back with the long nails on y'all. <laughs>